Well carried the Knicks offense. Pat Riley countered with Alonzo Mourning, who was a terror on the backboard, had 14 in the first quarter, and the Heat led 25-16. Determined offensive board work. Second quarter belonged to New York. Kurt Thomas came up with the ball, got it to Latrell Sprewell, who had 20 of the Knicks' 45 first half points. To tie the game. Knicks also won the Battle of Hustle. Chris Childs determined to come up with the ball. Eventually fouled by Zoe, made the free throws. 45-39, Knicks at the break. Second half, Hardaway to P.J. Brown, and the score, 53-51, Miami. Out of hand. What has happened to Ewing's hands? Brown and one. Jeff Van Gundy saw the big fellow rally the Knicks after that. Ewing with 10 in the third quarter, converting a pass from Latrell Sprewell, 62-57 New York. Larry Johnson lost his temper in that third quarter, and when he was teed up, Charlie Ward tried to restrain him, and LJ just pushed him away. Miami zoomed to the lead after that. Hardaway, three-quarter court pass to Zoe, and it was 69-65. What a game for Morning. 29 points, 13 rebounds, but it was not enough because Chris Childs stepped up in the fourth quarter. Childs hits again. 13 straight points by Childs. Miami rested the lead back. Tim Hardaway, who shot only six for 20, hit a big one, and it was 82-81. Tim Hardaway. <laughs> Knicks had an answer for that. Patrick Ewing with a two-handed jam. And that proved to be the game-winning basket. Now in the waning seconds, Miami with the ball and a chance to win. Shot no good. Tapped. Marley makes a stab. Can't get it. And Sprewell with the ball. Knicks ran out the clock after that. Van Gundy jubilant, thumping his fist in the air. It's been very, very special to be a part of this last four years playing them in the playoffs. Such a very good opponent, and to be able to beat them three straight years on their home court, I think is a terrific accomplishment for our players. They've done an outstanding job. But not the Heat, despondent as they walked into the locker room, and their coach would not give New York the credit. I've never been involved in playoff games where the games are determined with fouls. Knicks are celebrating because they made 28 of their 31 free throws, while Miami made only 11 of their 21. And he complained after the game that Freewell did not call timeout with two seconds left, and Spree said that he didn't, but the official said he did, and that's all that counts. We've got a whole lot more on the Knicks tonight. Up next, we'll take you inside the jubilant New York locker room. Also talk a bit of baseball, but Sports Extra focus this evening is on New York Knicks. It always seems to come down to the final minute, the final play. I mean, you can laugh about it and smile, but you guys have done it the last three against them. Yeah, we've been we've been fortunate. We've been very fortunate. And, uh, you know, I've only been a part of two of them, you know, last year and this year. And it's just a great feeling, you know, even though it's, the game is a nail-biter. But when we come out on top, it makes it just great. Sure does if you're a Knicks fan. Time now for a word from Nissan. It's called Nissan's Driven to the Hoop, and it happened in Game 6. Nissan, driven to the hoop. There's Knicks. They've been able to find so many different ways to win in the playoffs. Allen Houston hobbled by a sore foot. Wasn't a factor. Chris Child steps up. One constant, though, when the Knicks win is defense. Miami had eight 24-second clock violations tonight and weren't able to knock down the winning shot at the end. Carl Reuters got the winning story. Ward to Childs, and that's it. They play some of the most intense playoff hoops, and Game 7 today might have capped off what the Knicks Heat rivalry is all about. New York able to survive once again, beating the Heat. I'm very proud of my teammates. I thought they played a, a fantastic fantastic game free started out for us and Chris came in and did a, fan, a fine job on the defensive end and we was able to get the win we got a lot of guys a lot of heart in this locker room we come we play hard we do what we got to do uh, win or lose you know to me win or lose you come and you play hard you give it your all that's all you can ask for you lose that game you go home with your head up what is it about this series here with Miami and the Knicks the way it always seems to come down to 
the final minute, the final play? Well, every, I think both teams are so prepared. Um, and both teams have a lot of heart. They, they never let themselves get out of it. You know, the whole you know, rivalry thing for, from today until previous matchups and stuff. But, um, you know, we just relieved. You know, we got this win. Um, a lot of people was doubting us when we was down 3-2. But we came and poured it out and won two in a row. It's always tough down here, and uh, I expected it to be tough, you know, and uh, really when we came out at halftime, I, you know, I was telling guys, you know, let's not go out there with the attitude that we played a great half. Uh, let's come out here the way we did in game six, like we were down. And both teams wanted it. Uh, both teams wanted it bad, but uh, we made a plays down the stretch to get the win. Penetrates, kicks it out to Childs for three. I felt that I had to be aggressive when things are getting stagnant as the point guard responsibility to make something happen. Can you talk about what Chris did on the floor? He really attacked the basket. That's the biggest thing. You know, he stayed aggressive. Um, what can you say? It's a great play. He stepped up real big, um, came in, hit a pick three, went to the hole, got a three-point play, and just kept making plays. Chris Childs was just huge for us. Uh, Patrick got in foul trouble, didn't get down on himself, and just kept playing, just kept doing the little things that we needed him to do out there on the floor. Well, Chris played a great game. Uh, not only uh, defensively, I thought he did a very good job on the defensive end, but he made some big baskets for us. Plenty of time for the New York Knicks. Larry threw it into me. Zoe tried to come around the top side of me, get the steal, uh, and I went in and, and got, was able to get a dunk. So for a third straight year, the Knicks win a clinching game in a series on Miami's home floor, and they did it in style winning the last two games of the series, something that hadn't been done in 11 straight games between these two teams, win two games in a row. In Miami, I'm Carl Reuter for Sports Extra. Thanks, Carl. And throughout the show tonight, we'll hear more from the Knicks players. They'll talk about tonight's clincher over Miami and, of course, the upcoming series with the Pacers. But up next, some baseball. The Mets roughed up the big unit. Randy Johnson was no match for the Amazons. I think we were just fortunate to uh, to catch him on a, I wouldn't really say an off day, it's just obviously he had a little bit of trouble with his command today, and uh, unfortunately we took advantage of it. Big way, knocking the big unit all around Shea Stadium. Randy Johnson's worst outing of the year resulted in a 7-6 to six Mets victory. The game is in the General Motors spotlight. In their first at-bats against Randy Johnson, the Mets reached him for three straight double. Derek Bell's two-bagger sent Joe McEwing home with the tying run one all. Next up, Edgardo Alfonso got around, hit it down the left field line. The Mets were in front of the D-back two to one. Lead didn't last all that long. Arizona back in front. Luis Gonzalez singled off Rick Reed. Tony Womack beat the throw home. 3-2 Arizona. Mets got that run back in a big way. Mike Piazza screamed a Randy Johnson pitch sending it into the mezzanine. The Mets claim that Piazza's homer went 492 feet. Um, I just put a good swing on it. You know, hit it pretty well, and um, you know, it, was a, it was a good game all around for our ball club. Arizona countered Piazza's shot with a two-run blast of their own. Travis Lee, Arizona leads at this point by a count of five to three over the Amazing. What a game for the Mets, Joe McEwing. He had two doubles, and this homer his first as a Met, what a find he's been, acquired in a trade with St. Louis for Jesse Orozco. Edgardo Alfonso got the Mets even in the seventh inning. A solo shot off Randy Johnson. The big unit gave up eight hits, all of them for extra bases. The game kept going back and forth, back and forth. Steve Finley's homer off Dennis Cook elevated the Diamondbacks to a 6-5 advantage. Lots of souvenirs for the fans today. In the bottom of that eighth inning, Robin Ventura comes off the bench, ties it up with a home run over the wall in center field. Hit it good enough. Um, you know, wind wasn't really blowing in that much, so I, I knew I hit it pretty good. Game went to the ninth, all even at six. Joe McEwing steals second, puts himself in position to score the winning run. And he does just that. Derek Bell delivers a game-winning single to right. And the New York Mets were celebrating their sweep of the Diamondbacks. The final, New York Mets 7, Arizona 6. Win is a win, you know, and uh, whether it's by home run or whether it's by base hit, 
a wild pitch. You know, you know, this team, you know, we always, you know, excited about each and every at bat. Don't go out there and put any other pressure on it myself. Just go out there and uh, try to have quality ABs and try to be a piece of this puzzle, help this club win. I don't think a lot of people knew very much about Joe McEwing, but I think they're starting to catch on. Uh, he had a great game, didn't he? You know, a couple of doubles, a homer, stolen base, walk when we needed it. Um, played well in the outfield. Yeah, he had a very good game, and he's a good player. Good day for the Mets, not the Yanks. Orlando Hernandez began this day with the ninth best earned run average in the American League. With that kind of stat, you'd think that El Duque would have a winning record, but he doesn't. 